<laughs> what you say? Well, caught a carp, didn't I? Any good? Little one. Down at Pindrewood. I've fished it for donkey's years. Started in 2016. I've fished it purely because of the stock. It's as simple as that. It's on the RDAA ticket. It used to be a club water, but they've changed it. It had too many members in the lockdown, sort of created those lowest anglers come out from nowhere. The tickets went through the roof, as in numbers and uh, it just got so busy. So what Dell done is he dropped the ticket numbers down, put the price up a little bit, and it's just made it such a better place to be, it's more comfortable, and it's not a rat race, so to speak, whereas it was over that lockdown period and after the lockdown initially unlocked. I just love the place, it's my favorite lake I've ever fished. I've, I've never, I've never fit or fished it as in campaigned it, because I don't want it to end. You know, I just want it to sort of, it's, I want to be able to come back here and enjoy it if I'm struggling somewhere else, or sort of finding me fishing hard to get that sort of buzz and to get going. I just come on here and have a session and it just gets me fired up instantly. I just love the place. So Pindrewood is, I describe it as tennis racket shape. So sort of, you've got the, the handle of it, well, I would say it's 100, 100 yards across, then it goes up the lake and it, it opens up to this big bowl area, which is an area called Motorway Point. The three swims, Motorway Point, Lawns and the Cottage Bank and they sort of call it the Golden Triangle in the winter. That's where they sit. You've got 16 foots out there, 14 foots. But then down this end, you've got you're five and three foot of water. Throughout the year, they visit all these spots. They, it's just one of those lakes where you can find them. You know, you can find them at certain times of the year, somewhere on the lake. So being this time of the year, and I know that they get in this area, and I would say this is called the Plateau for a reason. There's a big platter out there, they pass over it, through it, round it. I'd say it's 30 yards wide, and in that 30 yards, it drops down into clay. They just love this area. And down to my left, there's a, there's a, a bay with pads and an overgrown tree. They sit there all day in the sun, and when they move out, they move over that plateau. So knowing that, I didn't want to come here, put loads of bait in, fill it in, spawn the place to, to bits, foam it up with a marker float. I didn't want to do all that. I was fishing for a bite. I just knew the area, I knew they passed over it. A couple of uh, rodding rigs out there on the right and the middle rod. The left hand rod was a stiff inch because I can have a little cast about. If I see them, I can fish to them and the chances are I am fishing with a stiff inch with the bee pulled up. And the baiting side of things, pretty simple, just 15 mil krilla boilies, glugged up in the uh, krilla glug, a bit of salmon oil, a bit of hemp oil, and the krilla crush, which is basically krilla boilie already crushed up. I just use that for a, 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 just to give it a covering and a, just to coat it up. A bit like a cool bait, I suppose, but without it. So when it hits the water, in my head, in my theory, is when it hits the water, all that, the crush comes off the bait and sits and floats and goes in the, is in the water column and the boilie sat there. So yeah, just catapulting, nice, easy fishing. To be honest with you, my favourite style of fishing. I love it. Catapult, heavy leads, pop-ups, fishing in clear spots, fishing for a bite. I don't think you can get a better way of fishing. So knowing these fish as, as well as I think I do, they do like a moon phase, whether that be a new moon or a full moon, they definitely like a moon phase on here. And I know that Floppy loves a new moon. And it's that time of the year, it gets caught every spring. Nathan hasn't been out for a year, and it was caught this time last year out of this peg on a new moon. So knowing that, I just had to get in here and have a go. I got the boys to rig up a GoPro on a, on a basing pole, and we pushed it through the surface of the water, past the scum, and I could see the spot. And you would not believe what we come across. After five years of being on here, and I've seen this fish all over the lake, but I've actually seen Floppy on camera I was, I was blown away, I couldn't believe it. I was mind blown. This carp is one of Pingra's 
finest car. It's like it's one of the relics in it. It's one of the ones that everybody wants to catch. All anglers have their go-to rigs. If I'm fishing a pop-up, it has to be the Ronnie rig. The Ronnie rig for me is the most effective rig because it's simple to tie, strong, reliable. I can change the hook without having to change the boom section if it gets bird over. And also, when it comes to birds or nuisance fish, picking the rig up or moving the rig, it'll always reset itself, fluttering back down away from the lead. The hook holds are the best that I can possibly get from a rig for the simple fact it's 360. It'll always spin, it'll always turn, and they'll always get them in the bottom lip. Well, we're here, three rods are out. Uh, let's have a little sort out, get the kettle on, and hopefully get a bite. As you can see, I'm covered in slime. I haven't had a messy weekend. Of uh, yeah, something a bit special happens. As Finn found out, uh, I think about 10 to 3 or half 3 this morning. I can't remember what time it was, but I haven't been asleep since about 1. Well, I wasn't even meant to be coming here to start with. I was meant to go up to North Met to start, my, start up there. Simon, he's, he's got a ticket and he's like, got a week's gap in between jobs. So he's, Go up the, uh, I rang him to tell him to go up North Met, he said he was, he was coming up Pinge, and it's my favourite lake. So I thought oh, I'll come and have a social with you. We're off to France in July, so it's sort of the last time we was going to get the fish together really. He got here, I had a baby scan at 8 in the morning, so I couldn't get as early as I wanted to. Stuck in M25 at 9 o'clock. Got up here, and uh, yeah, they're out in front of there, it's known as the Plateau, it's the sort of a known area this time of year, they love it out there. Uh, especially when it's warm because it's sort of the set, it comes right up into sort of five foot of water, four and a half foot when the water's down. Yeah, it was evident over there. They were there about. Tried not to sort of let them around too much. Got the rods out. They were showing from four o'clock in the afternoon. He was seeing them from about five o'clock all over the place in the morning. So it was just a matter of waiting for them to start showing when they started. There was a hatch of, so they, was, they were just everywhere. Just, you couldn't not see carp. It got to about 11ish, I think. And we sort of called it a night. I was laying in the bed. And I was just, I was just sort of dozing off, doing something on my phone. You know when you sort of you fall asleep and your phone falls on you because you sort of you weren't ready to fall asleep. Anyway, it sort of woke me up. I was like, I've always got my buzzers as low as they can get. I'm obviously always having my receiver on, but I hadn't turned my receiver on. So in my head, I'm like, you need to turn your receiver on. But by the time, but before I ended up fi finished thinking about it, I was asleep. And I woke up to a helicopter above us, police helicopter circling around the top of us, with the, uh, the search beam lighting the swim up, and that's what woke me up. So I woke up, thinking, what? what's going on here? And um, the first thing I done was turn the uh, receiver up. Literally within 30 seconds, I had a couple of beats from the right hand rod. I've gone down, sat next to the rod, and I can see the bobbin just doing, just, just twitching. I've not pulled it out of the clip, and in my head I'm thinking, that comes out of the clip, I'm hitting it. And it just went ping, wound down, struck, tench. But the, but the thing is, I've had three tench on here in five years. And Simon said to me yesterday, I put the rods out, it was like, perfect tench, perfect for the tench that will be, or something. Basically taking the mick out of me, catching the tench. And of course I've caught a bloody tench and I've, so uh, I said, oh, you jinxed me, got the, got the rod back out. First time, went back down clean. Got back into bed. Next thing you know, I was woken up by an absolute churner. Ran down, hit into it, and it just ripped off. I said to him straight away, well, this is, I think this is a good fish. And it just, nice and smooth. It didn't, like, it wasn't a steam train, but it was just, a, it, was, it knew where it wanted to go, and it was going that way. And. Uh, and then all of a sudden, I sort of started getting my waders on. 
thinking I'd like, all the time in the well because it was like it was just plodding out nicely. And then uh, it kited left. There's a bay to my down to my left, and uh, it sort of kited towards that. And then before I knew it, within 30 seconds, it was up gulping air, and I was out in, with the net in the waders. And as soon as it came up, I'd saw these big apple sliced scales on the top of it, and I knew it was floppy. But at the same time, I believe I didn't believe it was floppy. And I'm racking, I'm running through all the fish in my head trying to think which ones it is, but it's only floppy. It's only, it's the only one like it. It's come up, and I've got the net underneath it. And I stood there for three or four minutes, and I was just like, I think it's floppy. Nah, yeah. I was, I was just like, I was bamboozled by it. And uh, yeah, floppy, floppy went up. We put it up on the scales. It went 47, eight. We put that with the sling. Bang on 43. New PB. Couldn't believe it. What a morning. Can't quite believe it. Five years. A lot of ag. But she's finally mine. I got floppy in the net. So yeah, there was just me, Simon, Oz and John Bartley. We had it at about three o'clock this morning and it was light by R5, it was, it was nice. So um, I was come over, John come over. But yeah, we got it out, it was just an incredible carp. Absolutely buzzing. It looks battered, but it's just got a, like a wonky tail on it. It's got some big apple slice scales. It's, it's just an awesome fish, like, it really is an awesome fish. John like Bartley, he's a, very, he's a really good mate of mine, fishing and away from fishing. We live for the same sort of area. Obviously Simon's known me since the day I was born, so yeah, it was a special thing. We, we've got to do a lot of fishing together. So that was nice, and, and Oz, yeah, Oz has come around, and he, he's, a, he's a funny guy, great guy. And he, was, and, he, and he actually said to me yesterday, I was in the cafe with him yesterday, and he said, uh, he was like, he'd never seen it on the bank. He said, oh, if you catch it, give us a call. Well, I rung him at four o'clock this morning. I went, well, you said you wanted to see it, mate. I got it in, <laughs> I got it in the sling. <laughs> So yeah, he was he, he come round, he was over the moon. Yeah, it was really nice. We had breakfast at like half had steak and eggs just for a little celebrational breakfast this morning at like I don't know, half four or something stupid. But I thought if I don't eat it, you're not gonna get to eat today, do you know? So yeah, no, it was brilliant. Mega. Oh, oh you feel the whole lot? Is it on film? No, that's it, that's it, that's it. <laughs> Ready? Come on, straight to you. On feet, on feet. Yeah, it's the first time I've used the uh, used the Krillo in, in the UK. Couldn't believe it. First first night of using it. I've only caught the fish I've been after for five years. <laughs> but yeah, amazing. Like, I was blown away. It didn't sink in until I was looking at the pictures this morning. I took them off the camera and I was. That's when it's sort of, wow, I've, I've done it finally. So I've seen it, so I've seen it every year. I find it multiple times in the year. And I lost it last year at the net. And I pulled off and I hadn't been back since yet, but I struggled like, well, I say I struggled, I had, I had six bites lost three and that being one of them and I lost another good fish which I didn't see but yeah I haven't been back here since then so it was a nice nice return and if I'm honest it was about time really because it was beginning to give me the ump. <laughs>